Hey from the Christ Church family, I'm so excited for today's message because today we'll be looking at a topic that many churches choose to avoid or others completely misinterpret and that is obedience and the power obedience has to unlocking your promised land, to unlocking the fullness of what God has for you. But before we get into that, I just firstly want to say that if you want to make a donation to our church, all you have to do is click the link in the description box. You'll see there that you have two options. You can either choose to provide meals for children in need, or you can choose to donate to uh, to donate Bibles and resources to the persecuted church. So you'll see there there's two options. Whatever option you choose there, uh, 50% of the funds that you donate will be going to those missions, and then the other 50% will be going into our church. So thank you so much to each and every one of you who are donating to our church. We really appreciate it and you are helping us to be a church that is making a difference in the world. So uh, today we'll be uh, taking a look at 1 John uh, 14 verse 15. It says, <clears throat> If you love me, obey my commandments. Very plain and simple there. And this is something that so many churches misinterpret and the reason why they misinterpret this is because many churches also preach a works based salvation meaning that somehow if you just choose to obey the laws of God then you will get to heaven and that cannot be further from the truth because the Bible makes it very clear that we have all fallen short of the glory of God and all our good works are like filthy rags in the eyes of God because we cannot work our way to heaven because we simply all fall short of the standard of righteousness and holiness that there is to enter into heaven. <clears throat> so we are saved by grace through faith alone. That's what the Bible says. We are saved by grace through faith. It is not of our own works because otherwise we could be boastful about our salvation, but we are only saved by Christ. So why do we then obey God's word? Why do, they, uh, do we then seek to do good works? <clears throat> and the reason why we do good works is because good works and our fruits is an evidence of our faith. Meaning that if we truly believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins and that he rose from the dead and that he is our savior, then it will be impossible for us to look at everything that Jesus did and the power that we now have in the Holy Spirit and not want to obey God. That's why when we look at what the Bible says, God says that we will know His voice. We will know His voice. Why? Because we are in a relationship with Him. We are obedient to God because we love Him. If you love God, you will obey His commandments. It's so important for us to not just focus on the grace of God, because yes, the grace of God is amazing. It's astonishing. But from there, the grace of God will lead us to do good works. We should never think that, okay, we have the grace of God and now because all our sins are covered, that is an excuse for us to sin. No, we should rather look at the grace of God and understand how desperately we needed that. And then we come to the realization that the grace of God is a reason for us to serve Him more faithfully. Because we understand how wretched and bad we are and how desperately we need a Savior and how much He loves us and wants to have a relationship with us. And now we walk in obedience. When we look at the Israelites, they were disobedient to God and God kept them from entering into the promised land. Now the same is with us in our lives. If we are disobedient to God, we can call ourselves Christians very easily. It's very easy for me to say, I am a Christian, but do you actually have a relationship with God? And are you obedient to Him? Because if you love Him, your works will show your love for Him. So if you are obedient to God, then you'll actually tap into everything that God has in store for your life. Now, what do I mean by that? Because uh, I'm not saying this in a prosperity preaching kind of way where you will just have health, wealth and fullness of everything this world offers. But no, you will have everything that God 
offers you. For example, if you're disobedient when it comes to lust and you go watch pornography, you're disobedient to God and you feel bad and ashamed about that. But God wants more for you. He wants you to walk in peace and He wants you to walk in strength. And when you choose to be obedient and say no to porn and say yes to God, then He will fill you with His peace. You will not feel the emptiness that porn leads to. The same with any other sin because every sin leads to destruction and many times we get ourselves in the situation where we sin and we don't obey God and then things go wrong in our lives and we're in a low place in our lives mentally and then we say God why aren't you here why didn't you help me when I'm crying out but we put ourselves in these situations but the great thing is God is gracious he is loving and he is a good father so whenever you cry out with true repentance God will Onto you and he is there for you and he is your great comforter now this passage in 1 John uh, 15 that we read just above that uh, Jesus actually says that if we love him we will obey his commandments and then he said that the Holy Spirit will come to live within us and that is so powerful for us to remember is that Jesus literally says if you love me you will obey my commandments but he understand that this is difficult and so he says but do not worry I will equip you. I won't just say obey my commandments and leave you high and dry. No, Jesus is saying that God himself will come live within us and he will help us to live the holy life that he wants us to live. And now just to be clear again, we are not saved by good works, but we do good works because we are saved. Our obedience to God is the evidence of our faith in him. Let's continue in 1 John uh, 15, it says in verse 16, it says, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate. An advocate, someone who is fighting for you, someone who is in your corner, and that is the Holy Spirit. He's always with you, and He's always in your corner. He is encouraging you, because God doesn't want to look at your life and say, How difficult can I make it for this person? No, God wants you to tap into the power that He has for you, through prayer, uh, through worship, through reading your Bible, and He wants you to tap into that power, all you need to do is come to Him. Okay, and then further it says in verse 16, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot uh, receive Him because it isn't looking for Him and doesn't recognize Him. But you know Him because He lives with you now and later will be in you. This is absolutely incredible for us to, see, uh, to think about how God comes to live within us. Because the great thing about God is He is a fullness of goodness, a fullness of peace. So when He comes to live within us, He doesn't first need to fight in your heart, to have control of your heart. When you accept Him as your Lord and Savior, He fully comes into you and then He says, now let's work together to remove all the spiritual battles that you're going through on the outside but the inside your spirit is now the house of the Holy Spirit your soul is now the dwelling of the Holy Spirit so now you can go out into this world and even though you will have spiritual attacks and spiritual battles you can understand that there is no demon within me that I still have to fight because everything else that is within me the devil or uh, the devil and everything has been conquered the moment I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and He will now give me the strength to overcome any battles on the outside that I need to face. So when you see someone casting out a devil out of a believer, that simply is impossible because God cannot share a house with the devil. He cannot share your heart with the devil. It's completely Unbiblical. So I want you to understand this. When you look at scripture, when uh, you have spiritual warfare, you don't have to think, okay, now let me go within myself and ask the Holy Spirit to fight against the demon within me or the devil within me. No, the Holy Spirit is fully within me. I can now just go and fight depression, anxiety, all these things with the help of the Holy Spirit who is fully within me. Those are outside struggles. I need the help of God within me. So I just really want to encourage you with this, is that God is always with you. And obedience is something that, yes, we will fall short of 
always being fully obedient, but God and the Holy Spirit is our advocate, meaning that He is fighting for us and He wants us to succeed and live a full life in Him. He wants us to find our peace, our strength, our joy in Him, and He will do everything, everything in you to ensure that you have that level of success in obedience. All you have to do is just continue to pray to fill yourself with the things of God and tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, what do I mean with tap into the power of the Holy Spirit when it comes to obedience? What I mean is that when we have the conviction of the Holy Spirit within us, we can either choose to say, for example, let's use lust again. If you are in a situation where you have the choice, will I go and fornicate or watch pornography or sin? Or will I choose to be obedient to the Holy Spirit? Then you can either run to the sinful things or you can tap into the power of God by connecting yourself to God. These external options that you're facing, whether you want to go watch porn or whether you want to go watch, uh, be obedient to God, is a decision that you make. So in that decision, when you tap into the power of God, what you're doing is you're saying, God, I cannot do this alone. So in that moment, you are choosing to be obedient to God, to say no. But then even more than that, you can then uh, go worship God. You can pray to Him. You can read your Bible. You can just fully submerge yourself in who God is and all the resources that He has given us as believers. So I really, really want you to understand that obedience is not something that is destined for a believer and something that we should think just makes it a law-based salvation. No, we are saved by grace through faith, but then because we understand our salvation and the goodness of God and who we have living inside of us, we can now go into this world and make a difference, show people the transforming life of Christ within us. Paul and Silas were worshiping and praising God in prison. And the reason they were able to do it was because they filled themselves with God. Their lives were a life where they were obedient to God. And because of that, they found their satisfaction not in uh, their surroundings, the earthly things, but rather they found their fulfillment and their satisfaction in God. And that is what I pray for each and every one of you watching this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today we come before you and I ask that you will please help every single person watching this, that they can be full with the Holy Spirit, that they can understand that in you there is fullness of life. If they surrender to you, then they can tap into your power that will help them to be obedient to anything that life throws at them. Please help us to always walk in your presence and to always seek you above anything else. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless all of you.